Today, I'm going to tell you about milestoning. Milestoning theory was mainly developed by Professor Ron Elber at the University of Austin, Texas. Milestoning is a theoretical tool used to examine a Markov process. What is a Markov process? You may already know that a Markov process is a chain of events that is memoryless. That is, it is the assumption that the next event that will happen depends only on what is happening now and not what happened previously. In milestoning, the time between events must also not depend on any previous information. Milestoning can be used to examine a complicated system with many moving parts, breaking down one long process into many shorter ones. In milestoning, everything is divided by a series of surfaces. The state of the system is defined as the surface that was last crossed. Let's begin with an example. How about a soccer game? Imagine a playing field with a center line, penalty boxes, goal boxes, and the goals. Players are running around the field playing a game by trying to kick the soccer ball into the other team's goal. The soccer ball is moving because it is being kicked by the players. But let's simplify this system by ignoring the players. Now the ball appears to be moving randomly, or stochastically, crossing over the lines and maybe occasionally entering the goal. When the ball goes into the goal, the game is stopped and the ball is placed on the center line. Then the game is allowed to resume. What if we wanted to predict the answer to a useful question, like which team would win, or how long is the game expected to take? Well, the obvious way to answer this question is to let the players play one or more games and see what the results are. But there is another way that we could answer these questions. Imagine, then, that we look at just a portion of the field, say the region between the goal and the penalty line, with the goal box line in between. Let's say that we place the ball on the goal box line, then let the game resume. But as soon as another line is crossed, we stop the game, count the transition, measure the time it took, put the ball back onto the goal box line, and let the game resume. We would do this many times, counting each transition and averaging the times. Then, once we have enough transitions, we move to another part of the field, say the region between the penalty lines with the center line in the middle. We repeat the process, placing the ball in the center and see where it goes. Of course, this is likely to be different each time, so we try it many times to count each of the transitions just to see what happens. Finally, we put all this information into a matrix K and the time information into a vector T. We can assume that the transition probability out of a goal is zero, so it has a probability of one of staying in that state. Using this matrix and this vector, we can predict all sorts of useful things. For example, we can find the principal eigenvector of the matrix and get the steady state flux across the states. This would predict how likely each team is to win the game. We can also use a different formula to predict the expected time that a game would last. One last thing. If you could somehow make copies of the teams, you might be able to run many of these fields in parallel, gathering statistics even faster. This is one of the biggest reasons why milestoning is so useful. If we apply milestoning to its intended use, a molecular simulation rather than a soccer game, instead of a field, we might have a protein, and instead of a soccer ball, we might have a diffusing small molecule, and instead of field lines, we might have various states of the system. We can run the simulations and the milestoning on a supercomputer. By running many short simulations, we may be able to find the results we need much more quickly than by running one long simulation. Milestoning can be a very useful tool. So you should consider using milestoning for the next time you examine your favorite molecular system.